How's it going everyone? In today's video we're going to learn everything about the built-in print function in Python so that you can print like a pro. And for this video I'll be using the Z code editor. If you want to try Z, you can find a free download link in the description box down below. To get started, let's cover print's first argument, which is actually set to args, meaning we can choose to print a single element or multiple separated by commas. For example, we could print a single element such as Bob, or we could print three elements separated by commas. And when we run this, what we will get as an output is Bob or three elements separated by a space. Now, if we hover over the print function, you'll notice that the first argument is args, and you can tell that by the small asterisk in front of the values. Since the first argument is set to args, we can also choose to unpack an iterable such as a list into it. So for this example, we're going to create a list of people, which will contain the values of Bob, James, and Sandra. Now, if we were to print these people, and we were to also unpack the people into the print statement, you'll notice that we're going to get two different outputs. One will be the list itself, and one will be the values unpacked into the print statement. But you might be asking, why would anyone want to print each element separated by a space? Well, this is where the separator keyword argument comes in. So let's remove this one over here and create two of these. Then I'm going to provide a separator, which will be set to comma space. And we'll do the same thing for the second one, and this time it's going to be set to a dash. Now when we run this code, it's going to use that separator for the print function. And as you can see, this looks really nice. And so does this. And unpacking the people is no different than passing in the elements separated by a comma. So you can do that as well if that's what you want to do. I just prefer unpacking these kind of things because sometimes a list or any iterable might contain thousands of elements. Now for the next example, I'm going to change the separator down here to an arrow because I also want to show you that you can specify an end. And to do that, we're going to type in end equals and the end that we want to use. By default, this is set to backslash n to create a new line. But if we want to add a full stop, we can do that. Or we can copy and paste this directly under and add an exclamation mark. Now when we run this, what we will get as an output is Bob James Sandra full stop or Bob James Sandra exclamation mark. Without the new line, you're unfortunately going to have everything stuck on a single line, which is not something you usually want. So remember to use the new line each time you use end. The next argument we're going to cover is the file argument, which allows us to specify where we want the output to appear. By default, print uses standard output, and that's why we see it in the console but we can specify any location and print will follow our instructions and put the output there. So for this example, I'm going to open up a file called app.log and I'm going to open it in append mode. Then I'm going to roll a die and this will be a 10 sided die. And instead of printing it to the console, I want it to be printed or added to the log file. So let's run this a couple of times, one, two, three, four, and open up the app log. And you'll notice inside the log that we will have those roles. So here we managed to create a cheap logger, which is fine for quick and dirty work, but please consider using a dedicated logger for more professional programs. And finally, moving on to flush, which is probably the argument which causes the most confusion in the print function, especially to beginners. So let's dive into that. When you use print, it doesn't always write the output to the screen immediately, since it's a slow operation. What generally happens is your computer stores it in memory and then dumps the output in chunks. Now, modern terminals tend to use a line buffer. So there's a chance you won't notice the difference when you set flush to true on different lines. But if you decide to print on a single line, you'll notice that without flush being set to true, any updates you try to push to that line won't be displayed immediately your computer will update the line when it finds a convenient opportunity to do so instead. So let's look at an example where flush can improve our script. And we will start this by creating a for loop. And then for each iteration, we're going to print i, set the end to an empty string, so there's no new lines there, and set flush to true. And we're going to sleep for one second on each iteration. But to do that, we need to import time. 
Now when we run this, you'll notice that it's going to output 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And it's going to do that in an animated way. And when I say animated, I mean it's updating the console each time there's an update in the text. If we were to exclude Flash here, you'll notice that nothing's going to happen in the terminal for around five seconds. It's only going to show us the text as soon as it finds a convenient moment to do so. So to sum it up, use Flush when you want to see the updates immediately. But yeah, now that you know about all the arguments in print, you can finally start using it like a true Python professional. Personally, I tend to only use the first two keyword arguments and rarely ever touch the file and flush arguments. But the power in programming comes from knowing all your options and using them when you need them. Anyway, that's all I really wanted to cover in today's video. Do let me know in the comment section down below whether you have any questions regarding the print statement and its arguments. Otherwise, with all that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.